should be very happy, Mrs. Wentworth. I would be if it wasn't for that snake in the grass. Oh? Which snake is that? Errol Brookfield III. <laughs> well, it's not actually the biggest yacht in the world, but it's, uh, it's about 106 foot. And my daddy always told me, when you buy something, make sure it's big. He can't keep his eyes or his hands off of anything that's got a skirt on. I'm not going to let my daughter marry into that kind of trouble. Well, assuming what you say is true, what can you do about it? I've been thinking about that. Just give me a few minutes, and then bring Lorene out on the porch, OK? Of course, if you are certain you know what you're doing. A charming party, Mrs. Wentworth. Oh, Loretta, please. Oh, Loretta, of course. To our charming, gracious, and beautiful hostess. We haven't had uh, too much of a chance to uh, get acquainted, have we, Earl? Uh, no, but uh, that can always be, shall we say, remedied. Just what kind of a remedy do you have in mind? Oh, I was thinking about lesson number one, the Brookfield technique of instant and rewarding romance. He said, yep. You're pretty much of a mystery to everyone, you know. Uh, that is, as much a mystery as any woman can be. <laughs> Earl, you're a nice young man, but what about Lorraine? You're getting married. Oh, she's everything you'd want your daughter to be. She's dear, sweet, innocent, but very, very immature. Quit. Errol! You. You! And you. I don't ever want to see either one of you again. Ever. Mm. been looking all over for you, Lorraine. I don't think you got the message. I don't want anything to do with you. I know. And I'll go. But first, honey, I want you to listen. Why should I? Because you deserve to know the truth, that's why. I saw that, didn't I? No. You saw a mother trying to save her only daughter from a life of pain. I had to show you what kind of a man you were going to marry. You see, honey, I've seen a lot of Errol Brookville III's. Your father was one of them, without the money or the name. I made a mistake. And before you were born, he was long gone chasing after some other woman. And where we lived is coal mining country. And there were times we didn't have food for the table or a roof over our head. And I did the best thing I thought for you. I gave you up for adoption. And that's been the saddest mistake I ever made in my life. Well, that's all very touching, Mother. But times aren't nearly so bad for you now, are they? Oh, you mean these fine clothes and jewels and big uptown country house. This is Fantasy Island, baby. Mr. Rourke set all this up. Ask him. I only get to wear this finery for the weekend. What are you saying? I made a mistake. But I gave up my chance of being somebody and all the years it takes to be a country singer. Instead, I slung hash and served beer in every honky-tonk bar from Houston, Texas to Tallahassee. And I sent you the money so you would have nice clothes, a good education, and a real shot at life. Are you saying that you sent the money and supported me? All these years it was you? Joe and Nancy deserve a lot of credit, honey. But I served a lifetime of beers and sent the money to you. I have a trunk load of canceled checks to prove it. 
Joe and Nancy never mentioned your help, ever. No, I may never forgive them for that. But they were there, every day. Changed my diapers, they wiped my nose. They raised me. You understand what I'm saying? More than you'll ever know, baby. More than you'll ever know. Thank you for telling me the truth. 